Good afternoon you wee bastards and welcome back to War Thunder with Koala. So update 1.93 is well on the way. We've had a few dev vlogs as of the time I'm writing the script for this video we've had announced 5 new vehicles which I will discuss in coming videos. But today I want to talk about some better news, at least in my opinion. And that is that Gaijin has finally learned to count above 10. <laughs> ah, I kid, I kid. The meme's just too good. This was exactly what I wanted to see when I woke up yeah, around three days ago now. I'm late on this video, but hold up. Things have changed. Gaijin, I just want to say thank you for making one of the best baby steps you've ever taken. And that's exactly what this is, a baby step. This won't fix all our issues overnight. This isn't going to revolutionise the meta of the game and magically solve every problem with top tier compression. But Gaijin is implementing battle ratings of 10.3 for both aircraft and tanks to provide far better balance and begin to ease the compression of vehicles in top end matchmaking. Fantastic! Now initially the announcement of battle rating changes consisted of very little besides rank 7 tanks being moved up to 10.3 and the OF40 of all things the 8.7 premium being moved up to 9.0 to sit alongside the XM1. Now, we will talk about that later on in the video, but since that announcement several updates have come to the list, including new battle ratings for some helicopters, BR 10.3 for top end jets, and a rebalance to many of the game's strategic heavy bombers. As of yet, no 10.3 for helicopters, but I can only assume that's right around the corner for the recently announced MI-28 Havoc, my god that thing is gonna shrek. Anyway, in today's video what I want to do is go over some of the battle ratings that are being changed and we are going to focus solely on realistic battles mode, sorry if you main another but I do not so I'm going to talk about what I know. If you want to check out a full list of the battle rating changes it will be linked at the top of the video description but I want to spend most of this video discussing the changes as a whole and what they mean for us in game, what you lads can expect as well as what this means in the long term. Battle rating decompression means more room to raise vehicles up and balance things out and it's something that players have been asking for very strongly over the last few months and the last couple of years but it definitely has been a louder cry over the past couple of patches. This I see as the beginning of that, not the whole thing but definitely a strong beginning and I am very glad it is finally happening so no matter where this commentary goes whatever I say later on in the video just know that all of it belongs under the umbrella that I am very happy with this announcement overall. Before we get started. Yes, I did see that more modern aircraft carriers are finally being worked on, and I have had it confirmed by Gaijin staff that this is directly due to the recent surge in players asking for this, which in turn is down to my bringing such a topic to light. Of course, I'm not claiming credit for it, that was you guys completely, but it does make me feel phenomenally good and proud of the channel that I and we can help affect that kind of change. And I am very excited to see such ships come into the game. I also saw the supposed leak of the Swedish tech tree, which is not coming this update, it's not even been confirmed to be coming at all yet. That post made by a moderator that may confuse some people into thinking it was leaked or confirmed is simply being taken out of context by a content creator I won't name, and it's being misunderstood, creating false hype and false hope. There is no way the Swedish are coming this year. Anyway, let's get on to the meat of this video, shall we? So we're going to start out with the bombers, because in my mind this is the smallest change, though it is one I have spoken about in the past. I made a very popular dev blog discussion video when the ME264 was announced, talking about the balance of heavy bombers in War Thunder. In that video I talked about how the ME264 is roughly on par with some of the late American heavy bombers like for example the B24D Liberator, and that it and the Heinkel 177 Greif should be much higher in battle rating than they were at the time. These bombers are both substantially faster than the B-24 and carry a larger payload while basically matching it in defensive capability and yet they sit far below it. As of this update that is being addressed somewhat if not completely fixed because basically all the allied heavy bombers from the American B-17s to the British Stirlings and Lancasters to the French and Chinese Privateers are all being reduced by one battle rating step, so the 5.7s are going to 5.3, the 5.0 down to 4.7, etc. The ME264 on the other hand is being raised up from 4.0 to 4.3. So what does this mean? Well, not a lot. This is a good move, but it's far from enough. The ME264, which is effectively equal to the B24, still sits far too low, below the Mark 1 Starling, which is absolutely terrible by comparison. 
Ironically, the B24 itself is not moving at all, and neither is the overpowered Heinkel 177. Honestly, I think the B24D and the Greif belong at the same battle rating, with the ME264 no more than one spot below, and definitely not lower than a bomber like the Lancaster or Sterling which it is undoubtedly far superior to in every aspect besides maneuverability, which... It's a heavy bomber. Maneuverability is close enough to irrelevant, as makes no difference. Of course, where that battle rating relationship happens depends on the bombers themselves and their role in a battle. With their current standing, the best option I see would be to lower the Allied bombers down even further to be on par with the Greif and the America bomber with aircraft like the Lancaster Mark III being lowered down to something like 4.3. They serve next to no role in a battle right now besides being just a nuisance. They might as well be in a single player game mode and they're cannon fodder. They just fall out of the sky the second any enemy aircraft sneezes in their general direction. Seriously, the damage models of heavy bombers right now are absolutely pitiful. They're having their wings completely taken off by just a couple of 20 mils, or being instantaneously lit up by 50 cals, despite having fire extinguishing equipment on board and or self-sealing fuel tanks in real life. This makes them an absolute joke, and they're almost never able to win a match unless they're those rare bombers that can do it in a single pass, like the B-29 or Tu-4 for instance, and even then it's not overly common. However, if the damage models are buffed to the point where 4 engine heavy bombers can actually take a few hits and keep flying as they could in real life, then instead of lowering allied bombers, you'd be better served to keep the battle ratings they're going to have when this update rolls out and further up tier both the 264 and up tier the Greif. Of course then there are many things that could be done with bomber gameplay in RRB to make long range strategic heavy bombers work far better. Everyone and their grandmother at this point has made YouTube videos or Reddit or forum posts about what bomber gameplay should entail as far as objectives and team composition and game mechanic goes, solutions to solve the problems they create, and there's even the discussion that they should just have their own game mode where they don't have fighters in it, not player controlled ones at least. But all of this is definitely a discussion for another video. Next, I want to talk about the new helicopter battle ratings, as many of the ATGM equipped helicopters that sit at the earliest positions in their respective tech trees are being reduced below 9.0, getting rid of that previously imposed barrier. And this I see as a very good thing. Helicopters like the UH-1B, the Alouette 2s, the MI-4, the H-34s, and the new British helicopters the Scout and Wasp will all go down to either 8.7 or even 8.3. Now, this does mean that tanks as early as the IS-3 or M47 Patton may be exposed to ATGM equipped helicopters in regular matchmaking. And this may require a mechanic whereby helicopters below 9.0 can no longer spawn in the beginning of the match with guided weaponry, just like we had before SAMs existed. Helicopters at top tier doing so I think is fine because they do have SAMs to deal with, but remember, these early helicopters with early missiles have very limited range and aren't that good without the RWR systems or heat traps of later equivalents. Honestly, I always saw that barrier where as soon as a helicopter had ATGMs it had to be at least 9.0 as a tad nonsensical, given that we see ATGMs like the SS-11 as low in the tank tech tree as 6.7 and it never made sense to me why a helicopter equipped with them automatically had to go up all the way to 9.0. Helicopters are helicopters of course, and none should ever fight below 8.0 in my opinion, even the least useful machine to the bunch, such as the MI4 Hound. Of course, this is talking about the current game as it stands with the compression we have as of this update, and I'm talking about tanks like the M60, AMX-30B2, or STB-1, all sitting at 7.7. No helicopter should ever be lower than that, in the current game, which is why I don't agree with an Hold on to your butts. The AH-1G is being reduced to 7.7. .7. Goodbye King Tigers. <laughs> if in time battle ratings are spaced out, putting the current 7.7 .7 main battle tanks like those I mentioned before at higher battle ratings, 8.3 perhaps, then helicopters around them would also change accordingly. The most important relationship, in my opinion, is between helicopters and radar-equipped anti-air vehicles like the VADs, Gepard, or Shilka. I made a two-part video during Update 1.87 when radar was introduced as a functional game mechanic regarding how to use radar for surface and air vehicles. 
Now with the changes to radar this update, which no I won't make a guide on because I myself don't even get it right now, and it's still relatively non-functional. But those videos are now almost completely pointless. One thing I did highlight however was a proposed change to the battle ratings of anti-air vehicles. Now I did go into detail explaining why each of these battle ratings fit in my opinion, so if you want those explanations, justifications, I will leave links to the video below and on screen. But here are the BRs I suggested. Now this is once again going by current battle rating compression surrounding the tanks at these BRs, with 7.7 .7 being home to some of our earliest main battle tanks, and 10.3 being our ceiling. The VADs will stay at 8.0, while the Shilka and Saddam 25, a very slight step above that in usefulness, will go to 8.3. The Chieftain Marksman will sit at 8.7, while the AMX-30 DCA will be raised to 9.0. The M247 Sergeant York, Gepard, and Type 87 would go to 9.3, while the Automatic could go to 9.7, and the SAMs then sit neatly at 10.0, with the Bradley Adat at 10.3 being our highest. What this would mean is that there would be no helicopters in the game lower than any of the radar AAs, and this I see as the correct relationship there. However, the Radar AA are not all equal, the Gepard and Type 87 are vastly superior to the VADs and Shilka, and battle ratings should represent that balance. Radar equipped SPA like the Gepard or Shilka were designed to fight MiG-23s and F-4 Phantoms respectively, while surface-to-air missile carriers like the ADANS or Stormer were designed more with the threat of jets like the F-15, Su-33 or Rafael in mind. So the sabers and super sabers they fight now are kind of ridiculous. Now I know you're keen to hear about 10.3, but the last thing I want to talk about is a couple of the things that are being moved around below that that particularly interest me personally and that I want to talk about. Firstly, and I mentioned this the other day, but there is no way the A5 Saber should be going down to 8.7. In the opinion of most of the game's top RB jet pilots, the A5 is superior to the MiG-15 best, and the MiG-15 best shouldn't have gone down either. So to lower the A5 as well is a rather insane move that I do not think needs to happen with aircraft now also having a battle rating 10.3 added. That means the A5 can never see the top tier vehicles anyway, which vastly changes its matchmaker already. It definitely does not need the added benefit of being able to fight shitty French Uruguans and ground spawning R2Y2s. Even the F-84G Thunderjets will have a hell of a tough time taking out the A5. In many ways, the A5, due to its penchant for turning, would be the best variant of the Sabre for fighting older jets down at 8.0 or even 7.7. .7. Besides, of course, the F40, which also outturns other Sabres, but the F40 is 9.3 these days, so that much is irrelevant. Speaking of which, the Shenyang F5 is going up to 9.32, now that Gaijin has nabbed the sails from its OP-ness at 9.0. Once again, I joke around, but that is a very good, very balanced move. The FJ4s are going down to 8.7, which is a very nice change, and the G91, R1, R3, and R4 even are all going down to 8.7. This I would see as okay, besides the R4. The R1 and R3 could go down, but that doesn't even make sense either right now, because the G91 pre-series hits at 8.7 ever since the last change to jet BRs, which I didn't agree with either. I don't think the Yak-30 should have been moved up, I think it was fine at 8.0, especially when the F-80C got down-tiered. The pre-series G-91 should have stayed at 8.3, and then the R-1 could go to 8.7, possibly the R-3 as well, I haven't flown that one. The R-4, however, definitely should not move down, it's fine where it is, and it's superior to the R-1, blatantly. And once again, remember, it can't fight top-end matchmaking anymore, anyway. The simple fact of being one step too low to fight top end, aka a 9.0 in a matchmaker that extends to 10.3, immediately creates a massive shift in the vehicle's average matchmaker. This is what makes the 8.7 premiums so damn effective, because it's extremely rare that they get up to it at all, and even when they do, it's rarely above 9.0. The simple fact that 10.0s drag everything 9.0 and above up to face them just to fill the match queues means that 8.7s can't they fight them as often. Then the 8.7s end up dragging everything between them and 7.7 .7 up to face them. It does happen, of course, that you get 7.3 to 8.3 matchmaking, 8.0 to 9.0, and I've even seen 8.7 to 9.7 .7 in my challengers occasionally. But it's definitely the exception and not the rule. 
that's going to become important in a moment. But lastly, the Hunter F6 and F100D are going up to 10.0, which I see as a good change. I'm surprised none of the other jets like the F86Ks are taking the opportunity to move, and the CL-13B is now going up to 9.7 alongside the G91YS, which in my opinion it should, but of course that may come in another few months time. And the M48 patterns, both the US M48A1 and the German M48A2C are going down from 7.7 .7 to 7.3. And this is where we start our discussion on BR compression. I did say at the beginning of this video that this addition of 10.3 does not by any stretch of the imagination solve all our problems. It is a start, nothing more. It's a very good start, mind you, but the M48s should not be going down. Number one, that compresses the battle ratings even more, which should not be necessary when you've just offered up decompression at top tier. Number two, M48s versus Jagdpanthers, good luck. And number three, they're both far superior to the M47 pattern, so they shouldn't exist at the same battle rating. Honestly, the M47 is more comparable to the M46 than the M48 in capability, and I honestly know a lot of players who prefer the M46, even up at 8.0 because of the M47's bulk and crappy gun depression. The M48, on the other hand, is closer to balance with the M60 than it is with the M47. So the M48 shouldn't be going down unless you're also going to down tier the M47, which honestly just creates a bit too much compression. Instead of that, in my opinion, the M60, Leopard, AMX 30 B2, OF40, STB1, T54, 1951, and Type 59 should all be raised up to 8.0, and then equivalent increases in BR come to all the vehicles above them. That would also help retain the variety in vehicle types seen at higher tiers, which is something Gaijin states as one of their main trepidations when it comes to fully decompressing battle ratings, like players have been vehemently asking for introducing battle ratings all the way up to, for example, 12.0. An interesting change is the Vickers Mark 1 and Centurion Mark 10 being raised to 7.3. Now, this is a strange move in my opinion. I never saw either of those vehicles as particularly overpowered. Sure, they have stabilizers and high penetration, but they're also unbearably sluggish and have extremely little in the way of effective protection or post-penetration damage on their guns, not even having access to the solid AP slugs of the British tanks equipped with the 20 pounder. Perhaps if the Vickers mobility was buffed a tad, I could see it being a viable 7.3. With its reload, I always preferred it to the Cent 10, but honestly, even back when the Panther 2 and King Tiger 105 were 7.0, I saw neither of these two vehicles as overpowered, and this is both using them and fighting against them. Of course, meeting those big spacious tanks less often and being more likely to go against compact vehicles, which the relatively poor post-penetration damage of the L7 APDS can better expect to one-shot, could be a blessing in disguise. Only time will tell, but this also comes with the good news that the Falcon is being down-tiered to 7.3, making it usable with this lineup, which also contains the Vampire for close air support and the Conqueror Mark II heavy tank. Yeah, that's going to be a very effective lineup and one that I'm excited to try. I wouldn't suggest that the Falcon needs a down tier. Honestly, the only issue with it was that Britain had no 7.7 .7 tanks to use it with, so you can use it until 8.0 when you got the Marksman anyway. But of course, I did earlier suggest an up tier to the Marksman, so it's definitely an interesting discussion. What's odd though is that in update 1.87, I think, possibly 1.85, Gaijin did list in the patch notes that the reload rate of the Conqueror and Conway was being cut by almost 50%. If this change had ever come to the live server, which it never did, both those tanks could have been up-tiered, giving Britain a 7.7. .7. The Vickers MBT Mark III-M could also come as a 7.7, .7, and something I didn't see anybody talk about yet, but the Swingfire is getting down-tiered to 7.7 .7 now. This would give Britain a good lineup to use with the Sea Jesus as close air support, and I think that would be a better move than down tearing the very effective AA that is the Falcon. At the same time, the Kugel Blitz is also going down to 6.7. Man, that is a lineup that just gets stronger and stronger, doesn't it? Now for the top tier stuff. Finally, said all four of you that are still listening at this point. I'm sure you can guess if you don't already know, but all the rank 7 main battle tanks, along with the Bradats, and the top jet aircraft, the Phantom, MiG-19s, MiG-21 and J7, are going up to a new battle rating maximum, 10.3. Oddly, the Chinese MiG-19, the J6A I believe, 
is not being raised, even though if I recall correctly it does have roughly the same flight performance as the other MiG-19s. This is a big change. Now, the Bradads being the only SAM to go up I believe is more than fair, definitely worthy of that spot, it's essentially the best vehicle in the game, and it's just as much a tank destroyer as it is an anti-air vehicle. The tanks all going up to the same battle rating we'll discuss in a moment, and as far as the aircraft go, besides the J6, I think these are all perfectly balanced right now. Although I still do think that the F4C should have inline gun pods, not ones that are canted down. That was an option for pilots in the Vietnam War historically, by the way. The simple addition of a 10.3 battle rating will change things massively for tanks and aircraft at 9.0, because as we said before, the fact that they can no longer see top end means that they'll start getting an enormous number of down tiers. The XM1 and MBT-70 just became god tier, as did the F2 Sabre once again, which I am very, very excited for. That used to be my favourite aircraft in the game. Other than that, this won't be a huge amount of difference to the actual vehicles involved. There are now less tanks that you'll be able to gutter stomp in your rank 7s or your top end jets, but the relationship between these various vehicles isn't changing in the slightest. The Leopard 25 and Leclerc, the best rank 7s, will still be the same battle rating as the Challenger 2, which is the worst, along with the T-80U and M1A1 Abrams, which in my opinion are perfectly balanced against each other. I've highlighted this in the past, but I think the Challenger 2 needs its L27A1 Charm 3 round, which would still be subpar to that ridiculous round the C1 Aete has, along with the Challenger 2's TES, or Theatre Entry Standard Battle Pack. That would raise its performance by enough to put it basically on par with the M1A1 and T-80U, especially if other slower tanks like the T-72B are added at those BRs as well. I could go on for days about the balance of top tier, which tanks should get which shells and what penetration values they should have, but I will say that if you're of the opinion that Gaijin should make the Challenger 2 TES a separate tank, otherwise Britain can't get any more tanks, well they can. No, I'm not talking about the Mark II that Rheinmetall recently designed with the revised turret and smoothbore gun, but the Megatron or Black Knight packages, which would be effectively equivalent to the new model of the Ariete, the PSO. The default Ariete got its war kit along with its uber powerful round, and as an addition to the lineup, the PSO was added. The default CR2 could get its test kit and its more powerful shell, which once again is still not quite on par with the C1s while the Megatron or Black Knight packages could be added as separate tanks to extend the lineup in the exact same way. Honestly, it's perfect. The 8.7 premiums, now this is a point of controversy, and one crazy move that Gaijin is making in my opinion. Go and compare any of the 8.7 premiums to some of the 8.7 tech tree tanks like the Chieftain Mark V or AMX-30 Brennus, and you'll find that they are all vastly superior yet none of them are moving up to 9.0, even though if they did, they wouldn't be exposed to top tier tanks anymore. None. But, and this is the weird part, the OF-40 MTCA? This tank is good, it's one of the overpowered 8.7 premiums, and yes, all of them are overpowered and should all be 9.0. But the OF-40 was probably the least offensive tank to set at 8.7, for want of a better way of putting it. Of all the 8.7 premiums stomping every other vehicle into the ground at that battle rank, the OF-40 premium was probably the least problematic of the bunch, as unlike the Leopard L-44 and AMX-2 Super, it doesn't have thermographic optics. It does have a good bit of protection, especially versus old-fashioned shells and some against heat rounds, but this is such a minor benefactor when compared to, for example, thermal imaging, and the tank doesn't stand out in mobility over the AMX, penetration over the Type 74G, armor over the T55AM, or gun caliber over the Leopard L44. This is why I suggested a 105mm armed Leopard 2AV would fit better than a 120mm armed Leopard 1 variant. Given that the OF-40 doesn't have thermals and doesn't particularly stand out in any one regard besides possibly being the best all-rounder of the bunch, I do not understand this change. Yes, the OF-40 MTCA does belong at 9.0, but certainly no more so than the Leopard L-44, T-55AM or AMX-30 Super do. The reason they couldn't be up tier to 9.0 previously was because they couldn't be expected to fight the Leopard 2A5 or Leclerc, but now they don't have to. 
I definitely hear the most complaints about the T55AM and Leopard L44, while I think it's the Leo and the AMX30 Super that are the worst offenders. But yeah, all of them should be going up, and out of all of them, it baffles me that it was the UF40 that got the up tier rather than any of the others. This is the problem when you use player stats as evidence for the need for rebalancing, despite contrary beliefs from experienced players, and no, I don't mean me, I mean highly experienced players of this battle rating with far greater knowledge than myself, the OF40 is statistically doing the best, although conveniently us players can't see those stats, we only have the very unreliable thunder skill to go off. But that's partly because it's the rarest of the 8.7 premiums on the battlefield. It's statistically more likely to be played by the more experienced of War Thunder players than by the majority of newer people who'd come to the game and want to grind America, Germany or Russia, the three major nations with the largest player base. That makes the vehicle, in this case the OF-40, look better, and the others, which are statistically more likely to be played by a less skillful player base overall, look worse by comparison. In actuality though, the Leopard L44, T55AM and AMX30 Super, and Type 74G even, are all as worthy if not more worthy of the 9.0 spot. Even the shot Cal Dalet could then be raised up to 8.7, which it does belong there if the others are raised to 9.0. Similarly, out of all the IFVs in the game, the BMP2 is the one that's being moved up. Now, prior to 1.91, I would have agreed with this, pointing out that it is better than both the Bradley and Warrior. But this patch, we got thermographic optics for, I believe, every single IFV but the BMP2. That benefit is extremely important, it raises those vehicles potential considerably. It's a game changer for a support vehicle, especially one armed with powerful ATGMs. While I think up-tiering these support vehicles goes a long way in helping that whole variety in different vehicle types at top tier, I think this move has been done far too soon after the introduction of thermal optics for it to be an accurate accounting of the capabilities of these vehicles, given this new technology. We haven't had time to get used to it, the stats haven't leveled out since their introduction yet, and I think given more time, all of a sudden the Bradley and Warrior would take over from the BMP. And yes, I do believe the Bradley should get Itos. Honestly, if the premium tanks are moved up, then I think the Bradley and Warrior could both be moved up to 8.3 alongside the BMP2, given thermals I think they are equal, while the Type 89 and Bagel Panzer could be moved up to 8.7, where the Bagel Panzer actually used to sit. With the new BMP3 coming to rank 7, I am expecting the Marder 1A3, perhaps not this patch but maybe next, the M3A3 Bradley with TOW 2A missiles, and maybe even the Italian Dardo. I'd also like to see some more unique properties given to higher tier support vehicles. These are not light tanks in the same way that the M41 Bulldog or RU251 are, and they should stand out as just that, support vehicles. Changes to the maps allowing them to access different locations and possibly benefit amphibious vehicles a wee bit more and additional game mechanics may make these vehicle types more viable at higher BRs, which at the same time facilitates that variety at high tier that Gaijin wants, and I definitely understand them wanting that. The other solution is to just add more vehicles, and there are dozens more that could be added. From the VFM5 to the BMD or BTR series, the CTEC Leopard 2A4, T72B variants, aforementioned Mardo 1A3 and other IFVs, etc, etc, etc. But I do feel like we're straying away from the topic of this video now, so I might call it quits here. This is a fantastic change overall, and the simple fact that we've gotten Gaijin to listen and do what we wanted extend out the battle ratings is a fantastic thing. I've been at my wits end playing this game recently without the decompression we've needed for so long, even to the point of wanting to stop making War Thunder content at least as frequently. But this is definitely a step in the right direction, and a very good one. Not nearly enough of course, and this is evidenced by the factor of the M48s and the A5 Sabre being down tiered, compressing those areas of the game even more, and the lack of balance at top tier, with the rank 7 tanks still sitting together at 10.3, even though they are not by any stretch of the imagination equal. This is a brilliant baby step however, and one that I am very very happy with, but I implore you guys to not let up on your requests for proper decompression, allowing better balance which will then increase player satisfaction and subsequently the player base itself, easing match queue times, 
and allowing for that decompression to really work. Guys, make sure you are positive in your feedback to Gaijin. I know some of you feel like such a little change, only 10.3, no 10.7 or anything, is a bit of an insult after how incredibly compressed the game had gotten, and there are some rather crazy changes like the M48s going down or the OF40 of all the overpowered top tier premiums going up that we do need to give feedback on, and that feedback is unfortunately negative. But this definitely is a good change, and one that we should encourage Gaijin to make again next time. Go play the crap out of 10.0, 10.3, show them that match queue times aren't an issue, show them that we like this change, maybe even consider spending some money on the game, grab some golden eagles, grab yourself some top tier tanks, top tier helicopters, whatever. Make it worth their while to make this change again, and then next time we'll add in 10.7, then 11.0, and so on and so forth. Of course, it'd be great if we had the big player base to start with, allowing for more decompression without longer match queues. But I think at this point, we need to do things the other way around. Decompress the matchmaking and wait for the more positive experience thanks to that to bring those higher numbers of players in, allowing us to do it again next time. After all, you don't open up the doors to a newly established shop expecting customers to come in before you start stocking the shelves with products. Anyway lads, that is going to be it for this video, I really do hope you have enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did, subscribe and hit that bell icon join the 360 squad, and let me know your thoughts on this topic and this video in the comments section below. It was very nice for me actually to make a positively themed War Thunder feedback video. Come follow me on Twitter and Twitch, join the Discord, and support me on Patreon or hit that join button here on YouTube, it really does help the channel out a lot. Thank you lads so much for watching, have a lovely good day, and always remember, keep your bagpipes in one hand or whiskey in the other, keep your kilt firmly on, and I'll catch you next time. I say a wee thank you to these lads for supporting me on Patreon. Captain Fubar, DA261, Geesley Gadarsen, and Dark Recon. You lads are bra, if you wish to join them, come check out the link in the description below.